Hey everybody, this is John here with Flash Climbing and I'm here today with Lawrence Truesdale Smith and he is a bodyweight strength training expert and he's going to show us how we can incorporate that into climbing. So I'm super excited to have you on here today. How is it going, Lawrence? I'm very, very good, thank you, man. I've overtrained far too much in the sun today. I'm aching, but I've had loads of food, loads of coffee. So yeah, very good, thank you. How are you doing? Sweet. Not bad at all, man. Day started out good. It's a little uh, overcast and rainy here, but I'm going to try and get out and work out a little bit later this afternoon. Um, where are you located? Um, I'm in Worthing, which is in the south of England. It's known as God, God's Waiting Room. It's pretty much a retirement town, but it's nice. We've got a few decent workout parks around here, but yeah, that's where I'm at. Nice. You said it's been a, a sunny day out there today? yeah it's um it's blazing it's uh i don't know do you guys have easter weekends like a, as a whole holiday over in the yeah, u.s yeah. Yeah. okay yeah so routinely for the last few years it seems that suddenly out of nowhere like usually the uk is a very gray bleak place at the best of times but on uh easter weekend the sun just goes bam out of nowhere and it turns into like a roasting tray for a couple of weeks and that's happened over the last couple of days um and I've got a garden, so even with all the stuff going on at the moment in the world, I can still go out and train and hang up a pull-up bar and some rings. So, yeah, it's been really nice for the last few days. Nice. And so uh, where you're located, are you all under, like, strict quarantine where you can't kind of go out unless you're getting, like, um, medicine or food, I guess? Or is it a little more lax right now? It's a little more lax where we're allowed half an hour of outdoor exercise per day um some people you know abuse that but in general the parks are still open you can't go you can't go and touch equipment like you can't go into the playgrounds you can't use an outdoor gym like a lot of our parks in the uk have outdoor pull-up bars and push-up bars and dip stations and all that they those have all been like hazard taped off so you can't go and really touch anything you would be able to go on a basketball court but you can i live very near the sea and you can go and walk by the sea for half an hour if there's a group of more than three people the police will disperse you or and some people have been having barbecues on the beach but the police will just come and pour water over it and tell you to get back home pretty quickly um but for the most part we're we're fairly lucky we're in a good part of the world and things are fairly okay at the moment how about for you yeah so we're here in austin texas and it's been really lax uh whenever the kind of lockdown first kind of started happening there was like a lot of people that would just go and go swimming at like our local like water watering hole you know and beating big groups but they started kind of dispersing that a little bit and then i think this easter weekend here uh they're saying like no one can go in the parks at all no one can go on the green belts and hike and stuff like that so that's a little bit of a change than normal and it sounds like they're talking about extending that pass this weekend and so, which is a little bit of a bummer because uh, I've got a puppy right now who just got his like last set of puppy shots and I was getting super excited to take him out on the green belt for a hike or something pretty soon, but I might have to wait a little ways for it, I guess. Um, and just work out and walk around my neighborhood, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of where we're at right now on this whole thing. But um, it has been a bummer for not being able to climb and i mean i don't want to say like what was me everyone's dealing with right now but um this year i was really really um planning on becoming uh a 512 climber like i was at i, I worked i was climbing at four or five days a week outside uh, about two or three days a week i guess I'm like really getting into it when this happened and so right now i'm trying to figure out what i can start doing to um prepare myself for whenever we get let back out again, you know, and can get back on the wall again. So I'm super excited to talk to you about this today and kind of figure out what some of your suggestions are on like how I can kind of like get my body ready for this. Uh, I've been doing some hangboard stuff, but um, some jump rope and kettlebells, but I'm sure there's a lot more that I can do um, outside of those. It would probably be super helpful for me and everyone else that's listening. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess to get started, like how did you get into this bodyweight training stuff? Okay, cool. So it started in August of 2014, where I was 
this is the kind of part where I tell people I used to live in a skip and all that type of stuff, but it's not going to be like that. Where I was uh, kind of drinking too much of the time, eating really unhealthily, too many takeaways, uh, takeaways, Domino's pizza and all that type of stuff. And I went on a holiday to one of the Spanish islands called Mallorca. And I saw myself in front of the mirror as I was getting changed. And just, I was 23 years old at the time. And I pretty much had the body of um, like a kind of obese. It wasn't even that I was overweight. I was just a bit shapeless, had a bit of a beer belly on me. And it just, it really didn't sit right with me. And on that same holiday, I'd taken a pair of my favorite like billabong swim shorts with me that had been too big for me the year before because I was in fairly good shape. And I couldn't physically fit into them on that holiday. And it was like a very like linear measurement where I just thought, well, whatever I've been doing to myself over the last year of just basically not taking care of myself, it's had a very linear effect. I can now measure the fact that I've put on a serious amount of weight and I'm really not feeling good about how this is going. And after that holiday, well, actually, still on it, I went snorkeling with a friend who was, he wasn't athletic, he wasn't an athlete by any means, he was just essentially not fat, he was just skinny, essentially. And we got into some rough water um, on Caledemio Beach. And what I noticed was I really had started to struggle to stay above, essentially, or even just kind of catch my breath and it was a bit of a slow process I didn't really realize what was going on at the time all I could see was me swimming here and him kind of slowly pulling away from me as this water was getting rougher and rougher and it got to the point where I was really really struggling to stay above and there was a bit of rock that came out the side on the bay we were we were swimming on and he was moving towards that and I followed him and he climbed we both grabbed onto the rock and he climbed like basically to the top of this thing. And it wasn't massive. It was about two meters tall. Um, and I could just about hang onto the side with my neck above the water and let myself catch my breath here. And my friend walked up, stood on the top, took off his uh, snorkel and then just started laughing and just said, well, that got a bit rough, didn't it? And I could barely speak at this point. I remember looking at him thinking, a, his body, it, it really wasn't athletic. He was just not out of shape, essentially. And I had a very linear measure there in front of me. Well, you know, this has nearly cost me my life. The water wasn't even that rough. It was just choppy. It was just doing that, essentially. And I hadn't been in there for more than, I would say, 15 minutes. It really wasn't a good place to be in physically. And I swam uh, back to the beach, like, as close to the rocks as I could. I remember sitting on the beach thinking, well, I'm going to make a strong decision to do something about this. And I never want to be that scared again. Like, I'm a young guy, it really shouldn't have got to that stage. And I got back to Gatwick Airport at four in the morning uh, in London. And I had a two hour wait until the train started. But in the terminal, they open up the shops at four in the morning. So I went down to our local, our English local news agents which is wh smiths and they had this much like you see like kind of men's health 12 week body transformation bibles like the package things they had a beginner's guide to swimming and i just i, I bought the thing it was five quid i bought the thing and i just didn't put it down pretty much for the next two weeks and i had everything that you would want to know about swimming and i was already a mem member of a leisure center back home so i came back started swimming six days a week and i lost a lot of weight and I got fitter, but I still looked essentially skinny fat. I just looked like someone who'd lost weight with no real shapes in them or anything. And I didn't really have any strength. And then I was just kind of having one of those pointless browsers for YouTube one day. And I came across a video, which I believe is called Pull Up Kings, spelt with a Z because, you know, it's hardcore and everything. And it was a thing of guys in New York doing these crazy side-to-side -side pull ups human flag, working out in parks, just utterly ripped. And I remember watching it thinking, wow, man, I, I want to be that strong. And by that point, I'd been lifting weights for a couple of weeks, but just kind of doing this with bicep curls really wasn't doing for me. I just didn't enjoy it at all. And I went down to my local gym. I tried one pull-up and essentially got to about there. And then just pretty much fell off the bar. And I thought, well, if I can't lift myself up, I really don't have any business 
thinking I'm strong, like lifting external weights. So I want to be strong enough to have full control over my body. And from there, um, I got a couple of books, complete calisthenics, started watching uh, YouTube tutorials and went down to my local park, Victoria Park in Worthing, where they've got in the playground, like a single green pull up bar and a, some dip bars. And my first goal was just to get one pull up. That took me, I think, about two weeks. I was still like fairly chubby at the time. I wasn't like overweight anymore, but I definitely wasn't kind of ready for the cover of men's health or anything like that, put it that way. And I got the first one. I can still remember the feeling of just about getting my chin over the bar and it felt like the first step towards doing something meaningful. I couldn't really quantify it yet, but I knew it was it was just going to carry on from there. Then, of course, it was, you know, get to five pull-ups, get to ten. Um, started dreaming of doing the human flag and all that type of stuff and the handstands, but I was nowhere near that level of the time. And it was just from there a very linear process of looking up guys who, would, who were already, like, quite big in the scene um, and hugely strong, like Hannibal for King, Stephen Hughes-Landers, like the guys in Bar Stars and the Barbarians, just seeing very raw training of people working out, mainly in New York. Um, you know, through harsh winters and that kind of stuff. Just really going for it in training, doing simple movements, push-ups, dips, pull-ups, um, and then more fancy human flags and handstand push-ups and that type of thing. And it just became an obsession. I started going to more events. I eventually found some local classes um, and I met like a mentor, a personal trainer who was as strong as I wanted to be. And eventually started doing a few classes for him as well, which is how I got into the climbing side of stuff as we started doing a climbing calisthenics class together. And yeah, man, pretty, that was 2015 that I started training calisthenics and um, it just became like an obsession from there, from the climbing side of it. The first time I saw um, a woman who was doing bouldering training and she had like just kind of ball grips here hanging off her handboard. I was just doing like one arm lock offs hanging there and then just gently transitioning to the next arm. Mm -hmm. uh, and the more that I like watched climbers training, just, you know, Jesus Christ, these guys are athletes, you know, like um, John Buchanan and Dan Osman doing a human flag off a wall and all this type of crazy stuff. It just, uh, the, the demonstrations of strength I just became obsessed with. So, I know that was more of a, the Iliad or like a live story than how I got started. But yeah, I could talk about this stuff for days, but I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's, that's funny that you kind of got into this in uh, Mallorca because like, that's like one of the big climbing destinations of the world too, I guess. Um, have you ever seen like the video of uh, Chris Sharma doing the big arch over water? In there? I haven't, but I'm going to look it up as soon as we're... Uh, phenomenal. Purpose. It's crazy. He's got this climb he he uh, worked on out there, which just goes over the, uh, I don't know if it's like a bay or it's part of the actual ocean where the water comes in. It's a little choppy and crazy. And he's like, I don't know, 40, 50 feet up over the water, just climbing this thing. It's wild. <laughs> Amazing. But, uh, yeah, it's really cool stuff. I want to go check out Mallorca sometime. So um, that's cool, man. So uh, as far as kind of whenever you got into this and started seeing like the climbers uh, doing a lot of calisthenics and uh, bodyweight training, like um, what, what did you see kind of was the best things that like trans transitioned over from like your normal calisthenics tra uh, training over to actually being, able, being something that's helpful for rock climbers as well? I would say the obvious kind of stuff is like the hangboard training, right? When you see, just like in between sets or in between the, the main area of climbing that I got into was bouldering a, cause it's really accessible for people, right? It's, there's no, it's pretty much give it a go type of stuff. You know, the simple stuff that you, there's no huge learning curve for your first time doing it. You can go and try. So that's what I did. And in my bouldering gym, they have um, like a hangboard and gymnastics rings and ledges training area. And I would see the guys come off the wall and immediately go over and just kind of do like a 30 second timed hang of just hanging there or do a few pull ups in between. And one of the biggest things that I saw was like their work capacity. Um, if you think I come from a bit of a world where you can train for hours if you really want to, but a lot of it is strength training moves that you might hold for 
10 seconds at a time if you're having a really strong day or like, hey, let's just unlock a muscle up or something. But the first time I went bouldering and saw these guys, you know, the, the hardcore lot were going for four or five hours at a time and go grab a coffee in between, come back, and their work capacity was amazing. So the first time I saw it, really I'll say probably the most valuable thing, there's no you know, big shot to anyone, was particularly the grip strength of these guys um, going for training. And that's what I really saw, particularly, I'd say it's hard to quantify, but tendon strength as well. Like when I first saw climbers doing like just the one-arm lock-offs, um, with the kind of more advanced, the stuff you'd see in a Tom Cruise film, you know, where it's not practical, so to speak, but it's just cool looking. Where they're hanging up here with no feet on and then just come off here. The amount of tendon strength it takes to just hang on with one arm. Mm-hmm. That's, um, that's when I started to really see the, how do I say this? The marriage of skill, mobility and strength um, all just kind of melded into one and just really start to appreciate the athleticism because when I first started climbing and I suck at climbing I don't mind telling people that but when I first um, started doing it I had a friend of mine who was fairly okay take me along and um, there's me being a calisthenics guy and thinking right okay yeah this is going to be easy because I'm a big strong boy and I'll do it totally fine and within seconds you know my forearms are pumped my back's pumped my biceps are on fire so seeing the kind of strength applied in a it's a bolder problem right so it's like it's a mental thing half of it and just seeing it applied in such a graceful way um does that make sense and i've kind of rambled on for five minutes yeah no definitely um but i guess um max question would be um i guess like right now like we're all we're all at our homes like we need we need to work out and do some of this stuff um that would incorporate a lot of those movements you were talking, you were just talking about. Um, are there any like body weight exercises that you would suggest or do you, do you think that like right now there's any type of like, uh, anything we need to have on hand, I guess, to do a lot of this stuff, like probably a pull up bar or an edge right now would probably be most important. Right. I would say, yeah, totally. So I'd say probably like if, if you're a person watching this, you've probably got a hang board or a pull-up bar at home or handy if you're that into climbing like most people would. If you haven't, I would say, yeah, 100% go and grab one. Um, as a climber, the kind of – the bread and butter, really, I would say, is essentially vertical pulling strength. Like, it's no surprise there. So literally just doing pull-ups. But what I would say to people at the same time is often – when we climb, you'll see people start to bend at the elbow first when they pull, and in pull-ups in general, but neglect, neglecting the power of the scapula, essentially, because when we pull, you can see it just with muscle size, so like the size of the bicep, um, which we think like when we're doing chill-ups is all bicep strength, and it's not in, insignificant at all. But compared to the back, like the back is just like a powerhouse muscle. But what I'd say with the scapula, it's like, being able to put it into gear, you can tell your body that you want to direct all that strength into your back rather than you using a much smaller and by comparison weaker arms in order to do so. So what I would say is, yeah, definitely, definitely pull ups and stuff on the hangboard. But first, when you're here, rather than bending at the elbow first, just pull into the scapula, like retract your shoulder blades back down to here. And here's how it actually applies onto the wall as well, because we want to get stronger, but like this is for climbing, right? So Mm -hmm. if I've got my shoulders elevated up here, not retracted, and I bend at the elbow first, you can see where the bar would be is about my nose level. Think about the same as the wall as well. So if I'm reaching up here, that's how high I get. Mm -hmm. Now, I can't physically close, I can't, pull inwards anymore so like just if I'm doing a chin up well they're like the angle won't close anymore but watch what happens and imagine there's a bar there if I retract my shoulder blades so now it's a chest like here so you can imagine that if we're up on the wall like trying up here to reach a new hold that's a door that strength can unlock that maybe mobility and skill can't if you like if you can't reach that hold then it doesn't matter how much school you've got you can't physically latch onto it 
But if you've got the strength to keep that scapula retracted, because let's remember, if we're up there and we can't reach it, and that holds here that we've already got, we're trying to get up there. But if you retract and pull, that's like maybe three inches or something more yeah. that you now don't have there. So what I would say is clues in the name of hangboard. Sure, hang here and build up your finger strength, but also be thinking, hang with a depressed and retracted scapula here. So literally just rolling the shoulders back as mm -hmm. hard as possible and going for accumulated time in that rather than like any kind of strict reps or sets. It wants to be building strength with these kind of things rather than demonstrating so that when you don't get up on the wall, you're not feeling super pumped by this. Like one of the, we've all probably seen free solo, right? On Disney plus or whatever it came out when Alex keeps his climbing journal and there's a particular section of the wall that he's working on and he can't do it. And he writes down in his journal, too much pump needs more fitness and underlines it three times. Okay. So if Alex Holland said something like probably the rest of us can apply that, right? So right. it's the exact same thing here. Like the biceps, we've, we've all probably done a bicep curl before, right? Or at least we know what wall pump feels like, that horrific thing where your forearms are going to explode. Like that muscle gets pumped very, very quickly. So the more we have to use it, it's not necessarily going to mean uh, faster climbs for us, better climbs, harder sends, whatever it means for a particular climber at this time or in the future, obviously, when you can actually get back on the wall. Um, so directing it here into the much, much stronger back, that's just going to be like more efficient for us over time. It's like having a, you might have a super elite body like Annex Huddle's body, and I'm really pushing this analogy far right now, but if you can't get it into gear, it's like Lewis Hamilton having the best car out there, but it only goes into third gear. If you can direct it back here and say, right, I'm going to lose that larger muscle, reduce the pump, allow me to climb for longer at a higher level, better climbing, new level unlocked, et cetera, et cetera. So that's probably, there's a million different exercises we could go through, but I want to just kind of cover what's actually most valuable for people and just give some insights that way. Essentially, and as I know I've gone on for 10 minutes about this now, on the bar or on the um, hangboard here, but retracting, it won't be very exaggerated at first. I mean, when you first try doing this stuff, and probably we're all fairly strong because we all do climbing, but literally it's more the intention to mm -hmm. do it so i would even like just practice a hero with a towel trying to pull it apart and doing there and then get up on the handboard and then get up on the on the door and it's just going to give you yeah i think it'll be interesting to see if people try this for like edo portal who's a movement coach he's conor mcgregor's coach um gets people to do this for like 30 days um accumulating seven minutes per day you can do that i found i found what's helpful is if you've got a doorway pull up bar or one way you just kind of walk between your bedroom or whatever or your hangboards above a certain door just stick a phone timer on next to it just do 30 seconds of retracting is what i seem to find um gets it done rather than trying to stand under a doorway for seven minutes and bully yourself into doing it uh yeah that's my insights for that so i hope that no no, no need to actually do um pull-ups but just more like a, a dead hang in that uh position i guess What's useful is definitely do pull-ups as well. Um, but I'd say because so, just to so start. much of, yeah, just to start and also just getting used to it without kind of any acts of taxing on the muscles. Cause you all know, like if you, let's say you're resting on the wall that we don't want to be resting like that, right? It's just kind of hang and be as loose as possible. So the first part is when you initiate that pull first doing that and then pulling up to the next stage on the wall. Definitely try, try pull-ups with it as well. Um, again, because we're on the wall, go for that group. Do the pull-ups. Don't do the chin-ups. Um, so do, do pull-ups for it. Try it on a hangboard as well. You can try it with like various finger uh, combinations. But I'd say probably most people um, are doing the odd bit of pull-up training here or there, or they have done it at their climbing gym before, if a climbing gym's got a training area. But this will probably be the most useful thing for climbers specifically if they're not doing it already. With, um, with strength training, there's kind of no huge 
there's no magic formula behind it. I would suggest mainly doing pull-ups and any horizontal rowing movement. So some people might have gymnastics rings around. If not, you can get a towel and wrap it around. And just like if I was at, sat at the gym doing a cable row here, mm -hmm. like doing the same thing. But just for now, I would say if you aren't currently doing the scapular, retracted hangs and the pull-ups, go for that. That's going to be what's most useful for people. Nice. And um, incorporating that movement with the scapula will probably also stop you from getting injured as well, right? Which is something super important for climbers because we're always getting injured if we're pushing ourselves in this sport. Um, really, really good point. And with that, I would also say as well as incorporating pushing work into your training as well, because mm -hmm. let's say you're on the wall for anywhere between an hour for like a five hour session and however many days a week you're doing and doing all the training between of you want to get better at pulling up the walls so that you train pull-ups, it's logical that you do that. But if you don't train any pushing movements, um, and I'm not like an expert on injuries or anything, but this is just from what I've seen from working with boulders is that the rotator cuff, it really doesn't like it. Essentially. I'm not exactly sure on all the mechanics that go on with it, but balancing out, just like if you were going to train upper body in the gym, you train lower body, so to speak. Yep. Um, if you train biceps, you train triceps, it's the same here. So doing, I'd say definitely some vertical pushing movements. That means dips, essentially. You can do them if you haven't got dip bars and a lot of people don't have them. I don't have them and I'm into calisthenics at home. Um, if you've got like a V section on your kitchen worktop with like your sink here and your stove mm -hmm. over there, you can just do dips in between. So I'd highly encourage that. Press-ups as well, of course, um, are the easy one. But I would say because we're doing so much of this vertical work, on the wall it just makes sense to oppose that with the opposite movement of pushing down um and saving yourself some injury that way you can do if you've got like those rubber pull-up bands as well tie them around something and do general scapular mobilizing work around here the biggest kind of insight that would i would give to people here is when you get on the wall it should almost be like a demonstration of the strength and mobility and shoulder health, whatever you want to frame that as, that you've built off the wall so that then you can go and apply the stuff. Sure, you can come across a climbing problem where you know you haven't got the strength to quite do it yet, whether that's pulling strength or finger strength or you're not mobile enough to do a certain kick up to a hold or anything like that, that's fine. But if you're trying to like demonstrate strength on the wall or demonstrate mobility it's just going to be a harder time for you where if you like get off do the stuff do the mobilization work like obviously yeah the chances of injury are much 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 less and you can probably send like harder climbs and all that stuff over time as well so yeah injury prevention is good no one likes it it's extremely boring being injured it's extremely boring not being able to do the sport that we love so yeah do that that's stuff cool. Cool. yeah I, I mean i've always kind of done like push-ups like normals on the ground push-ups but um i've never thought to do actual the what would you call it like uh just straight down push-up or a dip a, i mean i guess it would be a dip if yeah if you're using bars yeah yeah awesome um and that's also something that we use in climbing as well we call it like getting out of the pool you know like whenever you have to get up to a, a spot and put your body up to yeah. over it and so i mean it's not like you're just you're doing something that's not going to help you in climbing it's going to help your climbing as well anyways so that's awesome um and i never thought about doing it like really dips on like a, a v-shaped surface um that's something i'll have to start doing because like that's one of my my pain points on my body is my, my rotator cuff like my shoulder mm -hmm. like i'll go out and do some kind of weird like movement on the wall and just like get off and just I have a sharp pain right here. I'm like, oh, I'm out for the day. But then it work it out and it comes out, it comes back again. But um, I'm sure doing more of these the scapula exercises and uh, opposing motions like that will help me a lot with that. Totally. And it's it also gives you a bigger insight into just how your particular I think how your body works is not maybe the 
most insightful way to frame it or certain niggles and stuff that you feel so you can recognize it on the wall because just like you said if you're getting into kind of a weird position I remember one where I was on this bowling problem kind of had to rotate my arm weirdly to try and get a hold and the whole time I'm trying desperately to hold on with this hand and then like completely screwing my shoulder up in this side um and when you're in the moment and there's a kind of bit of a you're you know 15 feet off the floor and there's an adrenaline buzz going on you just kind of think of it as well it's just part of climbing it's part of the sport eventually you you get hurt or something like that it's also like not necessarily true and it just gives you a bit of insight into oh i recognize that pain as that thing i had when i was doing pull-ups the other day or i know my shoulders got not getting into a comfortable position and if you get that insight you also they say you know a, a prevention is worth a thousand cures or whatever they say so if you can recognize that feeling before you've got there or before you fall off or make a last desperate grab for that hold and then it you know pings your shoulder off and that type of stuff it's going to be much more insightful and much much more useful awesome man yeah this has been like really crazy helpful and uh for me alone but i'm sure for everyone that's listening uh super helpful stuff that a lot of us climbers don't always think about, you know, everyone always just says, you know, the best way to get better at climbing is to climb, but there's also a lot of other things you can be doing to improve that time on the wall. And like we said, stop yourself from getting injured. So, um, so this is all stuff that you actually, you coach and you train people to do this kind of stuff. Um, how, if someone wants to talk to you about this and to learn more about doing it themselves, I guess, and, and working with you or asking you some questions about this, how can they find you? Awesome. So I have a Facebook group called Strength, Muscle and Control with Calisthenics. Like in that group, I kind of nerd out on my own training a bit and go super in depth on why stuff works, what people can do in their own training and all that type of good stuff. Um, I'm putting a package together as well, just to help people level up um one level in their climbing i'm not gonna say that i'm gonna turn people into alex honnold or anything like that overnight that'd be super ridiculous uh but that package is 997 and if anyone wants to get hold of that then they can shoot me a message um my name's lawrence trustell smith shoot me a message on facebook and mention that you like found me through this conversation as well if you just want to go on and find some tips or ask me some stuff come into my group strength muscle and control with calisthenics like pop your question in there i can happily talk about this stuff for days and days on end um and some resources um that aren't mine that i think would be super super helpful for guys is uh one uh, www.johngill.net who is a climber who's nerded out 50 times harder than we have today on like strength training and stuff he's got books on the history of uh gymnastics and climbing and he has even made um which is super super helpful for nerds like me uh like a chronological order of strength feats in climbing since like the 1800s and records of one arm chin ups and all that type of stuff and amazing feats of gymnastic strength in climbing um, that's johngill.net. So I'd highly encourage people to check out those guys as well. Um, yeah, that's how you can get hold of me. Sweet. We'll uh, drop the links below on this so that um, anyone that's kind of watching this can kind of check that out and reach out to you. But uh, Lawrence, thank you so much for being on today. This has been awesome, insightful, and super helpful for me. And I'm sure for everyone else, like I mentioned earlier, and uh look forward to kind of adding a lot of this stuff into my workouts and uh coming to you and i have any questions about this stuff thank you man it's been great to talk about it um as i said i can talk about this stuff today so it's nice to have a really like technical conversation all this stuff and yeah looking forward to getting back out there out on the rocks and out training as soon as possible sweet man all right i'll talk to you soon all right cheers thank you Thanks, man.